Cheers and welcome to Iron Dale Brewing. Doing double duty today, recording two videos, don't know when I'll get them all put together. This particular one behind me used to be the aftermath of doing a closed transfer from a Fermonster similar to this. And you can watch, I'll have another video, I don't know if it'll be before or after, uh, about cold crashing that talks about uh, using a closed uh, Fermonster like this in that, con in that uh, context. And this one, I'm just gonna walk through kind of uh, the setup to do a closed transfer, how I did it. Um, from a you know closed fermenter into a keg with no oxygen involved in the process. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do it. The way I did it, you use CO2 um, from one of these in this case. Uh, but basically, uh, you could do it this way, or some what some people do is do kind of more of a closed loop. So in my case, you'll see that I purged, I fill the keg with sanitizer, purge out all the sanitizer um, by using CO2 and then release the pressure. So there's no pressure in the keg, but there's no oxygen in the keg either. It's just been purged with CO2. And because you do it with the sanitizer, you don't have to do the 30 or so times if it were dry uh, to get it fully purged. So um, some what some people do instead of using gas from a canister is basically if you fill, if you purge, fill the keg with sanitizer, purge sanitizer out, leave pressure on the keg, and then hook the uh, keg back into the fermenter, then you can kind of use the pressure differential to get the flow going that way. A um, little more complicated, and for my setup here, um, and I'm planning to try this at some point, but I'd have to drill a second hole in the uh, lid here, or actually, I, in my case, I could have just connected the CO2 pressure from the pressurized keg into here. Seemed like a little bit uh, a little bit more risky because then if you don't have enough pressure, it's the wrong pressure, it's too much pressure. Um, I decided to do kind of a more straightforward yet wasteful method of just applying gas directly uh, and shooting it out. This one doesn't have one in there, but shooting it out the uh, spigot into the keg. So if you're interested in that, take a watch and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so step one, you wanna fill your keg all the way, and I mean all the way to the top uh, with star sand. So I'm gonna fill this up with you know, two, it's a two and a half uh, gallon torpedo keg, fill out all the way to the top, put, I think it's half an ounce of star sand in there and uh, switch that around and uh, then we'll go on to step two. So step two here is the keg is now full of sanitizers have been sitting for a few minutes. Um, and then I attached, uh, I love <laughs> the soda stream stuff. It's like probably not, or absolutely not the most efficient use of um, all the processes involving CO2, but I love the convenience of just slamming that thing onto the various bits and bobs you have to do during all this stuff. So basically the keg is full of sanitizer at this point. I've got the uh, soda stream there uh, on the left with the keg land mini regulator, and I'm just gonna blast all the sanitizer out of the keg into the bucket, at which point the, sanit the keg will be sanitized and full of CO2, and then we'll go on to the next step. Just to show some of this in action, got this at about, I don't know, three PSI or something. The camera would focus and, uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. There we go. Yeah, 2.8 or so. Don't want to put too much pressure on there because it's just wasteful. You can just, you know, unless your time is super valuable and just filling up this bucket with the, um, sanitizer that was in the keg. I think we're getting close to the end here. We should start seeing some bubbles, at which point I will try to remember which direction to turn the uh, <laughs> regulator knob. Okay, so there we got our bubbles. So we'll turn the gas off and release the pressure over here. Sorry, that probably got weird. Uh, so anyway, that means the keg is purged. I will probably just shoot a little bit more CO2 through there. And the idea here is since the keg is completely purged by filling it with sanitizer, pushing the sanitizer out with CO2, no oxygen in the keg, no sanitizer left in the keg. I'll make sure of that though. I'll probably tip the keg a little bit because these uh, dip tubes on the torpedo kegs go straight down instead of angling towards the middle. Um, and then I will release the pressure because 
well, we'll get into that when we do the actual transfer, but basically if the keg has higher pressure than the fermenter, then it's not going to work. Um, and once it's purged in this way, even though there's no pressure in the keg, it, there's no oxygen in it either. It's just CO2 and that's it. And you've released all the pressure. So uh, yeah, we'll go on to the next step here. There in all its glory is the green tea cream ale. Looks orange in this way, but we'll see how it comes out after it's uh, been in the cake. So idea here basically is this is the same setup I had in the uh, fermenter, or sorry, in the in when I was cold crashing. So well, in yes, uh, when I was cold crashing. So again, another soda stream canister and mini regulator is going to put a little bit of pressure on the fermenter. That's going to push out the spigot through the tube down into, and this is the part to pay attention to, the outpost of the keg, because that is the one with the um, with the dip tube that goes to the bottom. So you want the beer going in there nice and easy and slow all the way to the bottom, no splashing. Uh, and again, the keg's been sanitized, purged, etc. And I just uh, then switched that blow off tube to the in port, just in case there's any overflow. There shouldn't be, but we'll see. Uh, so let's get the transfer going. I'll see if I can do this one-handed. Oh, first, <laughs> put a little bit of gas on this thing because I don't know what it's at now. So let's see if this thing will focus. All right. Yeah, it's still got 1.5. I mean, yeah, we'll just leave it there and see how quickly it goes. All right, here goes nothing. Never done this before. Okay, it is moving. Things are bubbling. Moving very slowly. But there is beer going through the line, so I, will, I won't make you wait for this. It, it may take, oh, at this rate, probably 10 minutes or so, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So at the end of the last clip, you may have noticed that the fermenter popped in a little bit, and that's because the pressure had dropped to zero. So make sure you get enough pressure, <laughs> and you can see things are moving much better now. Uh, yeah, and that seems to be going along well. I think probably just wait a second. Eh, I won't make you watch that, but we are we are moving beer. Oxygen free, closed. We are done. Fermenter is pretty much empty. As you can see from cold crashing, that bag in there is the tea, if you haven't been paying attention. Green tea, ounce of green tea. A uh, little bit of beer left. I didn't want to get too greedy. And then that nice uh, packed troop at the bottom there, which is what we're going for. So I shut off the pressure. Keg is full. That uh, did no uh, no beer uh, excess ran off into the uh, into the spillover bucket. So that's good. So we're good there. And next step will just be throwing in in the kegerator. And the hardest part of brewing, which is waiting until it's ready to taste. I'll do a gravity reading here in a second. 